Hello, everyone, and a warm word of welcome to this uh, talk. Uh, it's a talk about a COIL project that was conducted last year. COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. Um, and I'd like to really just cover three main areas. So let me jump to the share screen, uh, uh, which lists them. The first is that I'd like to just give a quick overview about the project and, and the project assignment, uh, then talk a little bit about visual hermeneutics and the notion of fusion of horizons, which is a concept that comes from uh, visual hermeneutics, uh, was coined by, by Gadama. And then lastly, uh, just uh, offer a few reflections about the notion of fusion, how the notion of fusion of horizons applies to this particular core project. Uh, that we did. The, the reflections are sort of an after the fact, a post hoc reflections or after the fact reflections in the sense that we didn't formulate um, research aims and questions uh, at the beginning and then do the project with a view to answering those questions. So it's more of a, que a situation of, uh, of us doing this project as part of our, our duties as, a, as lecturers. Um, uh, and then afterwards, you know, everybody who participated began reflecting about what had happened. And um, this this talk is really about an, an, a post hoc post hoc reflection of some of the issues that emerged. Uh, so, so to talk about the Coil project, um, there were three. Uh, partners, COIL partners. Uh, the one was the University of Monterey in Mexico, which had uh, uh, 18 students enrolled for a, a subject called packaging design, but there were design students in, in a broad sense. Then at RCC or the Rockland Community College, in New York, there were graphic to six graphic design students. And at uh, DUT, Durban University of Technology, we had 32 students that were enrolled for the subject history and theory of graphic design three at at DUT we were busy switching from a diploma course to a degree course so this was uh, the last group of diploma students uh, that, that participated in the in the coil project um, and the 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 coil uh, activities uh, were were formulated very much in line with the with the guidelines of the of the Coil Center at SUNY State University of New York, uh, uh, which means that they have to be there or the the Coil principles uh, imply that there have to be a range of activities, uh, you know, icebreaker activities in the beginning to to uh, facilitate cultural exchange, people getting to know each other across different uh, um, cultures. And um, then there's an actual project, uh, and then there should be reflection activities at the end. Um, and uh, we did all of those, but but uh, the, so and this um, assignment brief really just uh, uh, relates to the second activity, uh, where we asked the students to identify one well-known designer, either a contemporary designer or a designer from history from their geographic region, and an already completed visual communication design produced by this designer. Um, so we allowed uh, graphic art, we allowed uh, web, web page designs, we allowed uh, short films, uh, and so on. Um, and so we, we took a very broad definition of, of visual communication design. Um, and also the, 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 the term geographic region could be interpreted either very narrowly or very broadly. It could mean just the University of Monterey, it could mean the, the province in which it's located, or it could, actually, it could mean Mexico as, as a geographic region. Um, but the most important thing is that the assignment must discuss how the visual features of the design link with the visual culture of that uh, geographic region. Um, because COIL projects are first and foremost about cultural exchange. And we thought that if we set an assignment that, that, that um, links with that, it, it would, would go very well. 
the uh, for an assignment of this nature, the, the ling English language skills of the participants need to be quite um, quite good. And so we were initially a bit uh, concerned about the students from the University of Monterey because their home language is Spanish. But it, it turns out that their ling English language skills were, were quite good, really, and, and it, it wasn't an issue as, as the project proceeded. Um, and um, so, so once the students um, started talking with each other, uh, we, we asked them to record these, um, these conversations. And then later after the project had, had finished, you, you know, when I went back to, to, to look at those recordings, um, what stood out for me is that, um, is that the, the principles of visual, that first of all, what they were engaging in falls fairly and squarely into the area of visual hermeneutics. Visual hermeneutics can be defined as a process of interpretation and validation as applied to visual statements. That's a very broad definition. And um, uh, hermeneutics in a general sense, in hermeneutics in a general sense, uh, Kadama is a very important author who coined the term of a hermeneutic circle. And in, as part of that uh, uh, approach of talking about a hermeneutic circle, he, he also mentions the, the idea of fusing of horizons, which describes situations where a first interpretation then merges with the second interpretation after the interpretant was faced with the new situation. And uh, if, if we apply that to what happened when the students met in groups and talked about each other's designers and the designs and, and so on, then, then uh, this theoretical model uh, fits really well with what actually happened when the students met and discussed their, their, their respective assignments. Um, and so the, what happened is that the students' first interpretation of how the visual features of the chosen design link with the visual culture and the geographic re in the, of the geographic region that the, that the university was in at the beginning of the project, then fused with a second interpretation at the end of the project after they encountered the new situation of interacting digitally with geographic design students for, from another country. Um, and, um, and in that sense, and that's something I'd like to end, end with, the, this approach of, of a fusion, I mean, the notion of a fusion of horizon is a very useful tool to describe what actually went on when the students were interacting with each other. Um, and one could perhaps in future design coil projects that that are structured in such a way that that, that, that uh, process of, um, of different interpretations in the, uh, that, that, that fuse, uh, creating a, you know, a, uh, resulting in a, a new interpretation, uh, that, that, that um, the, the assignment structure could be done in such a way as to actually facilitate that process. Um, unfortunately, in a short presentation as this, there isn't really enough time to, to properly go into all, all of the issues. Uh, but I very much hope that if you're interested, you can then go and um, read the, you, you would then go and read the full paper once it's published in, in the conference proceedings. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, and I look forward to your questions at, at the end of the session. Thank you and bye-bye.